One of the first things that came to my mind when I heard that Eamon Bundy did not have food for two days, that he was chained to a bench, literally starved for two days, tortured by hunger. Many, many things went through my mind. But the first thing that I went went through my mind is this man has not even been convicted of anything. He is still innocent till proven guilty, and yet he's being tortured. And then the second thing that went through my mind was I was thinking as Eamon Bundy was tortured there on the bench with no food for two days, I was wondering how much food that the fat pig Hillary Clinton was throwing down her mouth. I was wondering how much fatter Hillary Clinton was getting every day, her and her husband and the fat cat bankers who are out walking free among us. And it really got my blood boiling when I think of real criminals who are stealing millions and millions and millions, literally billions of dollars from the Americans, stealing it from us. And they're wrecking havoc all over the world with their wars and their crimes against humanity. And I wonder, and I wondered how in the hell we are letting this happen, where the real criminals are walking around, filling their face with as much food as possible, getting fat like fat cat bankers. And then we have Christian, Christian men who have never hurt a fly. I dare you, I double dare you to find any evidence, a film, a news clipping, any writings that Eamon Bundy has ever hurt anybody. I've never heard anybody so gentle, so calm, so Christian-like in my life. I know for a fact that Eamon Bundy could never hurt anybody. And yet, Hillary Clinton walks free among us. She's feeding her face like a fat cat banker. I mean, this woman is literally putting down as much food down her throat as she can from the millions and millions of dollars she has stolen from America by peddling power and influence. She's a criminal of the highest order. And I know one other thing, that if the FBI ever did get off their lazy ass and arrest her, if they ever did get brave enough to put handcuffs on her, I think that woman would be out on bail in a New York minute. And you, do you think, do you think for even one second that even if Hillary was to spend 15 minutes behind bars that they would not give her food? I mean, could you imagine Hillary Clinton being in jail and not getting food for two days? I mean, this system is beyond corrupt. We are ruled by people who think they are above us. And these criminals also know, they know for a fact that their power and their money will let them get away with anything, literally anything. They can kill, steal, and nothing will be done to them. Even the highest law enforcement people of the land cannot touch them. And yet the poor people are thrown behind bars without even being convicted, without even hurting anybody. The poor people are thrown in jail and starved, tortured, literally no food for two days. And you think I'm exaggerating? No, I'm not exaggerating because you know what? Quite frankly, I've seen this coming for a long time. You see, I've been paying attention. As the rich people get richer and richer and they get more drunk on their power and corruption, I've noticed that they're not really paying attention to us poor people, how the poor people are suffering, how we don't have any jobs. And then when we don't even have any jobs and we speak out and we say, hey, this system is corrupt, we need to change it, what do they do? They throw us in jail and they torture us and they don't let us eat for two days. Try that for a moment. If you don't care about humanity, just try going two days without any food. Try to put yourself in the shoes of Eamon Bundy, who has hurt no one, by the way, who has not been convicted, and yet we are letting the authorities torture him with no food for two days. And this is the just one of the things we've heard. I bet you behind the scenes there are many, many other different ways of torture, like cold, 
cold temperatures and hot temperatures and diesel fumes and I can and the list goes on and on how they are torturing the poor people. We are now in a time where they are torturing the Christians again. The Christians are being persecuted and tortured and are we going to stand around and wait for God to send some biblical scale disaster to take out these criminal corrupt tyrannical government? Is that what we're waiting for? Are we really waiting for God to send this biblical disaster? Because it just might happen. I don't rule that out. But I have another theory. I have another solution we could also try to implement. Let's take the criminal Hillary Clinton. Now we are all aware of all her crimes, her criminal activities, how much money she's stolen from not only Americans but the world, her crimes against humanity. These are all well documented. But there's something that maybe we're overlooking. Why is she walking free among us? Why has the authorities not arrested her and put her in handcuffs? I'll tell you what I think. It's because she's part of a group of 40 million people. Let me say that again. Hillary Clinton is part of a group of criminals and bloodsuckers. There are 40 million government workers out there. And do you think that these government workers who think that Hillary Clinton represents them, do you think that these government workers, these authorities are going to arrest her and put her in jail, put her in handcuffs, torture her without food for two days? Do you think that the 40 million government workers are going to do that? I don't think so. And because of that is why I got in the game. Because of that is why I got into action. And you're probably wondering by now, what am I talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. I know that the 40 million government workers are not looking out for you and I. I know that the 40 million government workers are only looking out for their criminal bosses like Hillary. That's why she's walking free among us and she's eating the good life while Eamon Bundy was tortured without food for two days. And that's why I created the European tribes of North America. See, I, you see, I saw this coming. I saw that the rich and the richer were just getting more powerful with their money, and they were getting drunk on their power and influence. And I saw the poor people struggling, and the poor people were being persecuted and thrown into prison like cattle. So that's why I created the European tribes of North America because I know there's only one answer and that is the power of numbers. If you don't join a group and if we don't get our 40 million people, quite frankly, I think we need more than 40 million people. You see, because they have 40 million government workers, but they have badges and they have guns. So we're going to need what I think is over 100 million people. Now don't laugh at me and say this is impossible because nothing is impossible. If we put our minds together, we can spread the word. We can get 100 million of us to join one group. I say it's the European tribes of North America because you know I got your back. You know you have to join a group where somebody is talking the same talk that you are. If you believe what I believe, that the government is out of control and overreaching and they are persecuting Christians, if you believe like I do, that we should not starve Christian men like Eamon Bundy for two days and torture him. If you believe like I do, then you will join a group. You will join the European tribes of North America. And that's the only way that we can save our people. You see, because if we got 100 million people in one group, let me tell you something. I make one phone call and Eamon Bundy is out of jail tomorrow. Yeah, you think I'm joking? No. The power of numbers. You see, they have 40 million bloodsuckers. Yes, they have badges and they have guns, but they're not very smart. They're not very clever. You see, they're lazy. They got that paycheck coming in. They think their pension's all set. Their mind has gotten lazy and mushy. That's why when we get our tribe together, our 100 million people, when we put our tribe together, we're not lazy. We are fighting for our own survival. We are literally fighting for our survival. And when I make that phone call, if we were to get a group of people together that strong, one phone call, Eamon Bundy is out of jail. Trust me.
That's how it works. Now, you might say, well, maybe you don't care about Eamon Bundy. Okay, fine. You don't care about Eamon Bundy today, but how about if the next person they come and get is you, or the next person that the authorities lock up and starve for two days is your son or your daughter? And you know what you do when they lock up your son or daughter? Call Hillary and see if she'll help you. Let me tell you what Hillary's done. Hillary's already hoarded away her millions of dollars that she has stolen from America. And she's already got her plan in place. You see, Hillary and her criminal friends have already put the FEMA camps in place. They're already preparing for this big collapse of the petrodollar. You see, they know it's coming, and they're already ready. Like I said, they got the FEMA camps for you and I, and they're heading to Europe for their ivory towers. So it's basically the 40 million government workers with their guns and badges against you and I, while Hillary and her criminal friends run to Europe in their ivory towers. Well, you can do a couple things. You can try to do every man for himself, which I don't think is going to work out too well, because when you only have one person up against all those guys with their guns and badges, it's not going to end well for you, trust me. The only thing we have, our only chance after the collapse of the petrodollar, is to have one powerful group, the European tribes of North America, and when we make the phone call, something will happen then.